I invite the congregation to please stand and to face our processional cross. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Processional gospel from St. Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them. And he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and other, others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with, with you. you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for your life for us and for this time of festivity as we remember your triumphant entry into Jerusalem. We ask that you bless these palms and all who wave them and adore you in, in, our, in our parade, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth now in peace. In the name, in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Read.
Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring, to you before your passion they sang their hymns of praise, to you now high exalted our melody. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Let us now acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess, we confess to you our faults and failings. And too often, often we neglect and do not, not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear now the good news, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that all may receive new life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you of, in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth.
let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. Into your hands, hands O oh Lord, Lord, I command my spirit. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Into your hands, O oh Lord, Lord, I command my spirit. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also exalted him and gave the, him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth, 
and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised, we will trust your word. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th and 27th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. And I invite the congregation to be seated, please. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. When Jesus said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, my father, If it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? 
Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. And they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which is just, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You are a you also were with Jesus the Galilean. He denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do, I do not know the man. After a while, while the bystanders came up and said, one of the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. 
Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and whipped, wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Jesus said to them, what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? And all of them said, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he re released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him, and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene, who was named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross, 
And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The bandits, then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in, believe in him. He trusts God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised. We will trust your word. 
let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Be seated, please. This right here in my hand, this right here in my hand is one ounce of pure silver bullion. In today's market, it's worth about $24 approximately. And I don't know what the price of silver was at the time that Judas betrayed Jesus, but if you take 30 pieces in today's dollars, this ounce of silver, it's about $720. $720. A man who had journeyed with Jesus as a disciple, who had seen his miracles, who had seen Jesus feed the crowd, who had seen Jesus heal so many, who had been kneeling with Jesus in prayer, who had eaten with him at the table, sells Jesus out. For 30 of these. What kind of sin, what kind of brokenness motivates someone that's so close to Jesus, the Son of the Father, the God of the Creator of the universe, to sell Him out for 30 of these? That's how the story begins out of Matthew's Gospel today doesn't just begin with one man's cowardly greed. The story begins also in the jealousy of the chief priests who just couldn't handle the fact that Jesus was the king. They couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle a threat to their power as a temple elite. And so it's greed and jealousy which conspire together to do what? To put Jesus on the cross. Of course, the story doesn't end there. The disciples who had gathered with Jesus that night, they would become deserters. In particular, a man named Peter who would betray, not not betray, but who would deny Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. Then there's the man named Caiaphas, the high priest who Jesus went to their house Caiaphas is a piece of work. It's almost like he is Satan with Jesus in the wilderness and he tests and challenges Jesus there on the spot. I put you under oath of the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah. Don't you see the irony in that? Putting the creator of the universe under oath of the living God. And then Jesus is finally handed over to a man named Pilate. Oh, we know all about Pilate. He shows up in our creeds. He's the one that crucified Jesus, right? Pilate had no character. Pilate was more interested in what the crowds thought about him than he was about doing the right thing. Instead, he'd release another man named Barabbas, a notorious criminal, He did it at the crowd's request and sentenced Jesus to death. Death on the cross. And then something in Matthew's Gospel which is really quite peculiar happens as we read the story that the characters who torture and kill are all unnamed. The closest that we get to identifying those folks are what Matthew calls Roman soldiers. Even the two bandits, one on the right and one on the left, they don't even have a name either. The only one who has a name in this part of the story is the focus of the story, and that is Jesus. Matthew simply describes everyone else as they. And so they beat him. They flogged him. They spat on him. They made a crown of thorns and pressed down upon his head. 
And Matthew describes everyone else with this pronoun, and he says, And when they had crucified them, they divided his clothes amongst themselves by casting lots. They sat down there, and they kept watch over him. They kept watch over him. Friends, we are entering the most sacred week of the church year, a time for us to keep watch. A time for us to remember and to pray, to reflect on what this means that Jesus died for you and for this world. It might also be a time to remember all of those folks who were responsible for the death of Jesus. And also the untold numbers of those who were simply referred to as they that are responsible for us suffering and death as well. And so maybe I think that there's a reason that Matthew describes those folks in this part of the story as they, because they, of course, could mean just about anyone. In fact, they might as well mean everyone. Every person who has been born of sin in this world is they. But the story, of course, doesn't end there, does it? After all, Christ's death is not the end. Christ's death is just the beginning. It's the beginning for us, the beginning of new life, of new creation, a life of forgiveness and love, an everlasting life promised to us from the kingdom of God. And this is the promise for they, for those would not only sell Jesus out and doubt Him and make Him suffer on the cross, but for those of us who also experience suffering in this world. So I invite you this week, as you enter into the precious and valuable story of Christ's passion, to remember that it's far more worth more than 30 of these. It's worth your redemption and the salvation of the world. Amen. Tremble, tremble.
United as one in this, in this holy week, in this day, this time of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in our Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, descended into hell. hell. On the, the third, third day, day he rose again. He ascended, ascended into heaven. He is he seated at the right heaven. hand of the Father, and he, he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, for the world, for all of creation. Save your church, O God. Enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other settings of ministry to proclaim your extravagant love for all creation. Merciful God, save your creation, O God. Every living being you have made has purpose. Give us renewed appreciation of farm animals who labor in the field, service animals who accompany their human companions, and beloved pets who live along, alongside us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save the peoples of the earth, O God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecuted for their religious beliefs or political activism and deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to places where conflict runs deep. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save those who cry to you in any need. Watch over all who are incarcerated and awaiting trial and stand with those who are unjustly accused. Bring, be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful, especially remember Dolores, 
Mike, Donna, Kim, Rick, Virgin, Joan, Bev, Emily, Kent, Don, John, and John, and Joanne. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save us in your love, O God. Guide the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, acolytes, and all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this holy week. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save us at the last, O God. We give you thanks for your saints of old who em embodied your servant love. As you came to their aid, so deliver us in times of trial, that every knee would bend in praise of you. Merciful God, We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us join in sharing that, that peace with one another. Was my mic off during the sermon? No. You can hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I, Survive COVID. Good. So. Okay. <laughs> Glad you're here. <laughs> Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. How are you? <laughs> Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Hey, morning. Peace. Peace. With you. Peace. Peace. Peace be with you. So, oh, I thought you were saving, saving this for Easter. So. seeing you. Peace, Bryce. Peace, Sarah. Peace. <laughs> Peace.
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Let us pray. God of all good gifts, receive these and all of our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Jesus Christ, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life, And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's table has been prepared and all are invited. Be seated, please.
I invite the congregation to please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Restore in us, O God, the splendor of your love. Renew your image in our hearts, and all our sins remove. Bring us all, Christ, to your share, the fullness of your joy. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and forevermore. Amen. to serve and love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.